hello YouTube. Welcome back to the Bison Workshop. I'm Bob. And today we're going to go ahead and put the differential back in the rear end of the truck. And uh, see how this goes. Uh, without anything else to say, let's get to it. All right, guys. Finally, we can get this thing back together. Get some of these leaves out of the way here. All right. Now we need to slide this bad boy over here. And first thing we got to do is clean all this off. Like this because what I'm going to do is be aggravated with the text. <laughs> We're going to clean all these off and uh, set them where they belong. That one goes to that side. Then we got our ring. Then we got our caps. And what I'm going to do. I'm going to take some of this, uh, well, let me clean this side here out a little bit. Is take some of this uh, high temp grease. And we're going to get us a little bit of it. And we're going to do the inside of our bearing race. And the reason I'm doing this is to give the uh, bearing a kick start before the uh, gear oil starts working. And then I'm just going to Turn them a little bit, kind of get some of that in the uh, bearing on each side. And it also helps hold the uh, race on the bearing while you put it in. Or at least that's the consensus. <laughs> Now let's see if we can get this up in there. I'm just glad my truck is high off the ground. 
because I can set up while I do this, I believe. So, we got our shims ready to go on. We got our caps ready to go on. Now I'm going to move into position here and hope my truck don't fall on me. Because these little old jack stands ain't worth a crap, man. I don't trust them. Ah. See, that's why I put a rag underneath of it. Alright, let's see if we can't do this. Second shim in. Alright. Now we'll go ahead and put this up. Forty two degrees out today, man. I'll tell you my body just don't like cold air, man. Alright. Now let's go ahead and uh get these tightened down. Never thought I'd see the day this would be happening. Getting this thing back together. Alright, now I'm going to take and just tap that a couple times same thing with the other side alright drive shaft turning Get on now on this bolt right here that holds this pin in you're going to want to use Loctite on it now they say to use red Loctite I'm sorry I want to get this back out one day I don't want to have to heat it up to get it out so I use blue Loctite and I think blue Loctite is just just fine so um, I've got it tight so now, we get to uh, put our new cover on, and I have to say on this cover, I'm a little disappointed in the bolts. Um, 
the reason is they gave me these kind of screws and they mix matched them with these kind of screws you see the difference and I may have to end up using the other ones because I'm not sure I like those uh, being mix mats like that. Uh, so now we're going to go ahead and put our gasket maker on. smear that around. We don't want a god awful amount on there. We just want enough to hold the gasket in place. You don't want to have to clean up a whole lot of squeeze out. Probably want to work quick when it's just cold out. Alright. Now we're going to set our gasket on it. Line the holes up. Then we're going to go on the pan here. Trying to work quickly here because I don't want my stuff getting too cold where it ain't working very good. And it's starting to get that way. That's why I had it in my pocket there earlier. Keep my body temperature, let my body temperature do the work and hold it temperature. My dog's after a squirrel. And to be quite honest with you, you really don't need this, but uh, we don't trust the surfaces to be uh, able to flatten like it should. Now, if this was a heavier pan, be a different story. You know, they make things thin now. They don't. Uh, they don't give you any meat. It costs too much to give you that extra inch of stuff of uh, metal. I'm amazed at how this country even survives with the uh, the amount of metal they put in stuff. up on there. Just gonna put one in there temporary. You know, I'm sliding it. I didn't realize it. Well dang going. Them bolts don't even fit. The hole. Not cool. 
Now I can't paint the rear ends yet because it's just too cold to be painting. You tell me why they gave you bolts that don't fit the holes. Those are too big to go in them holes. So I'm gonna go get the original ones. I just put them there to hold them in place. I'm gonna go get the original ones and put in it because I've already painted them. And I think that'll look good because I'm gonna paint this black hammered and the bolts are painted black hammered. So I think that'll work, make it look a little bit more like detail. Now this summer, this summer I'll come in here and take the bed off of this thing and redo, you know, paint the rear end and, and detail it. Um, right now I just, I'm just trying to get my truck together. Once I've got it together and everything's working, then this summer I can just take the bed off of it. It's as simple as taking, bed needs work anyway, so, uh, some the idiots that had this thing before they cut the main support that holds the back part of the bed to, uh, straight to keep the the bed sides from going back and forth and lining the tailgate up well they went and cut a big old line with a sawzall or something up through it I'll show you what I'm talking about right here they cut that you see where they cut that all the way up through there and that's the support to keep the uh, bed uh, or bed sides from moving side to side see I got issues here man uh, that needs to be addressed so uh, I've got a lot of work to do to this truck and once I'm done with this truck it's gonna be a nice truck uh, I got a lot of painting to do and I'm going to paint the frame black, the springs black and I'm going to paint the uh, rear ends with black hammered. Yeah I think that looks better uh, than chrome bolts anyway. Um, I'll use them chrome bolts for something else. But, um, yeah, I, I kind of like the black hammered bolts that holds it on there. Gives it detail. Makes it look more rugged. Looks like you spent more time thinking about it than just slapping it together. So, that guy did a pretty good job on that, man. That's what I live for, man. I, I live to hear that them words from people. Uh, you know, if you can't take pride in your work, there really isn't any point in doing it because all you're doing is being a disappointment to yourself and to others. And I don't like being a disappointment to other people, although it seems to be uh, the routine thing uh, to be a disappointment. By accident. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and tighten these up. And I stagger back and forth. I do that on everything. And you learn that practice when you're doing head, head jobs on um, engines. Now you don't want to wipe any of your uh, 
rubber off yet. Once that dries, you can just take a razor blade and go right around it and cut it, and you can take it all off in one piece. So uh, that'll be done when I go to paint. Um, you know, I'm going to clean up these brake lines. Now, some of these brake lines are new. Uh, and I do have some brake line around here, and I may replace all this brake line uh, simply because it is old and has been on this truck for quite a while. So uh, now the next thing we got to do is uh, put the uh, hubs on it. So that will end. Part 3 of the 93 Ford F-350 uh, rear rear end rebuild. You guys have a good one. Later.